Suppose you were a mountain climber. On any given day, you could climb up the mountain a thousand feet or descend a thousand feet. But if you were going to describe to a friend what you did on that particular day, not only would you use the word thousand or thousand feet, but you don't also have to say whether you went up the mountain or down the mountain. And scientists don't really like that. They recognize that uh, math and numbers allow you to indicate whether you went up the mountain or down the mountain much more simply without having to say it in words. And the way to do it is to define something called the change. And the change, as our convention works, is always going to be the final value of that variable minus the initial value of that variable. So for instance, if you were um, worried about a mountain, you would talk about the change in altitude as the final altitude minus the initial altitude. So if you climbed up the mountain, then your change in altitude would be 1,000. But if you went down the mountain, your change in altitude would be minus 1,000 feet. And so the sign, plus or minus, tells you whether or not you went up or down. Well, we're going to use exactly the same idea when we're talking about changes in internal energy, where the change in internal energy is going to be the final internal energy minus the initial internal energy. And if this is true, then you can recognize that if the change in internal energy is greater than zero, then energy has flowed from the surroundings, abbreviated SURR, to the system. So something has gone, uh, energy has gone into the system from the surroundings. And conversely, when the change in internal energy is less than zero, then what it means is that energy has flowed from the system into the surroundings. Now we've already talked about the fact that the change in internal energy, and again we're focusing on the system, the change in internal energy of the system is equal to the heat transferred plus the work done. And what we're going to focus on in this lecture is this idea of work. Now, given that we have the convention that when delta E, the change in internal energy, is greater than zero, then what that means is that heat has flowed from the surroundings into the system, um, then Q has to be greater than zero for that event. So in other words, when heat flows from the surroundings to the system, Q is also greater than zero. Again, because delta E is equal to Q plus W, that gives the right sign for delta E for this process. And similarly, when the surroundings does work on the system, we need delta, uh, W to be greater than zero. Again, W is the work done. And what we say is that when the work is positive, what it means is that the energy of the, the change in energy of the system is going to be greater than zero. So the internal energy will increase for the system. All right, so the kind of work that we're going to be most interested in with regard to chemical systems is something called PV work, pressure volume work. And we're going to see exactly why pressure volume work should be particularly important for chemical systems. Um, imagine you have a system of gases and you ignite that uh, gas system and it burns, say you started with some methane and some oxygen and it burns and makes carbon dioxide in water. Well, that's going to expand that because it gets hot the gases on the inside of your system are going to expand and they're going to do work against the surroundings. They're going to push the surroundings back. And so that's what we mean by PV work. And we can quantify that PV work by thinking about carrying out this transformation inside a cylinder where we know the geometry of the cylinder. So the red section here is a cylinder and the green section is the bottom of a piston that slides without resistance up and down inside this cylinder. So, you know, we're missing, we're only showing the very bottom of the cylinder. And there is gas on the inside of the cylinder, excuse me, the bottom of this piston. There's gas on the inside of the cylinder and this piston can move up and down and when it's moving up, it's moving up against the external pressure. And the external pressure is equal to the force on this piston divided by the area. Now, what area are we talking about? The area we're talking about is the cross-sectional area of the piston. And if this is a circle, then it's pi r squared, where r is the radius of the cross-section of the cylinder. Okay, so. When, when the gases expand, they're expanding against the external pressure. Now, we can quantify the expansion by noting that we can measure the height from the bottom of the cylinder up to the bottom of the piston. 
And then after the expansion, we can measure the new height. And just as we defined a change in energy to be the final energy minus the initial energy, we're going to define the change in height to be the final height minus the initial height. Well, if you think about it a little bit more, you'll realize that the difference in volume between what was contained here by the piston in this position and what is contained here with the position that, with the piston at a higher, um, a greater height is a change in volume. And that change in volume is the cross-sectional area times the change in height. 